In the waning years of the 23rd century, humanity reached out beyond the cradle of Earth, stretching its hands into the vast expanse of space, not knowing what awaited in the cosmic void. The discovery of faster-than-light travel had opened the door to the stars, and with a mixture of trepidation and exhilaration, humans stepped through, eager to meet their cosmic neighbors. The first contact came not with a peaceful welcome, but with a silent, ominous fleet amassing at the edges of the Milky Way. Alien ships unlike anything humanity had ever imagined hovered at the border of human-explored space, their intentions unreadable, their technology unfathomably advanced. Earth's governments, once divided by petty conflicts and nationalistic pride, found a new unity in the face of this potential threat. The United Nations Space Command, UNSC, a body born out of necessity and cooperation, became the spearhead of humanity's response to the alien presence. Dr. Lena Kurov, one of Earth's leading astrophysicists and a key advisor to the UNSC, played a pivotal role in deciphering the signals emanating from the alien fleet. Her team's breakthroughs in communication technology had allowed for the first tentative exchange of information with the extraterrestrial visitors, known as the Thrall. But the news was not encouraging. The Thrall conveyed messages of a galaxy in turmoil, a cosmos teetering on the brink of a war that spanned light years and involved myriad alien civilizations, each with its own intricate history, culture, and martial capabilities. Humanity was invited, or perhaps compelled, to join an intergalactic coalition formed in desperation to counter a common adversary, the Vorax, a relentless conquering force that had laid waste to countless worlds. As Earth's leaders debated their course of action, the populace of Earth and its colonies lived under a cloud of anxiety and fear. News feeds and broadcasts were filled with alien images and cryptic messages, stirring public curiosity and dread in equal measure. Admiral James Hawkins, commander of the UNSC's newly minted interstellar navy, found himself at the helm of humanity's martial response. His fleet, a patchwork of converted commercial vessels, experimental warships, and hastily armed cruisers, was Earth's first line of defense and its primary hope in any military engagement with the aliens. Meanwhile, on the fringes of the solar system, contact teams attempted to establish a more profound connection with the Thrall envoys. Dr. Kurov, alongside a team of linguists, diplomats, and scientists, worked tirelessly to bridge the vast gulf of understanding between the species, seeking common ground and a mutual basis for cooperation. Yet, amidst these efforts, a sense of unease permeated the ranks of the UNSC and the corridors of power on Earth. Humanity was venturing into uncharted territory, dealing with beings whose motives were inscrutable, whose ethics and values might be alien in more than just origin. The Thrall, for their part, remained enigmatic, their communications laced with urgency but lacking in warmth or empathy. They spoke of the Vorax with a mix of fear and resignation, describing them as a force of nature, relentless, unyielding, and seemingly unbeatable. As Earth's leaders weighed their options, the shadow of the alien fleets loomed large. The choice was stark. Join the Thrall-led coalition and enter a conflict of galactic proportions or remain isolated, potentially facing the Vorax onslaught alone. In the closing days of the year 2287, a decision was reached. Humanity would not cower in the face of the unknown. It would stand with the coalition, bringing its ingenuity, resilience, and spirit to the intergalactic stage. Thus began humanity's foray into the cosmic fray, a chapter in the annals of the Milky Way, where Earth's children stood alongside alien brethren, facing a common enemy in a battle for survival and sovereignty in the galaxy. As the fleets prepared and alliances were forged, the people of Earth looked to the stars with a mixture of fear, hope, and determination. The universe had called, and humanity answered, stepping into the gathering storm. As news of the impending intergalactic conflict reached Earth, humanity stood at a crossroads. The planet's leaders convened in an emergency session of the newly formed Global Defense Council, a body representing all nations in matters of extraterrestrial defense. The gravity of the situation was palpable, with representatives from every corner of the world gathering to discuss the alien ultimatum and the request for humanity's involvement in the interstellar coalition. 
in a secure conference room adorned with the flags of all Earth's nations and a large holographic projection of the galaxy, the Council debated their course of action. The atmosphere was tense, with some advocating for isolationism, arguing that humanity should fortify Earth's defenses and avoid entanglement in alien affairs. Others, however, saw this as an unprecedented opportunity to secure humanity's place in the cosmic community and to gain access to advanced technologies and knowledge. Dr. Lena Nguyen, a leading astrophysicist and advisor to the Council, presented a detailed analysis of the alien message and the potential technological advancements at stake. She emphasized the strategic importance of allying with interstellar powers, highlighting the benefits of shared knowledge and the risks of standing alone against unknown cosmic threats. General Marcus Hawke, a veteran of Earth's unified defense forces, spoke next. He outlined a plan for rapidly advancing Earth's military capabilities using alien technology, proposing a program to train a new generation of soldiers and pilots in interstellar combat tactics. His speech was a rallying cry, emphasizing the honor and duty of defending not just Earth, but potentially other worlds and species as well. Amidst the debate, a young diplomat, Amira Al-Farsi, proposed a different perspective. She argued for a strategy of diplomacy and cultural exchange, suggesting that humanity's unique experiences and perspectives could offer more to the galaxy than just military might. Her eloquent plea for a path that emphasized understanding and collaboration struck a chord with many council members. The decision was made to accept the invitation to join the Interstellar Coalition. Earth's message of acceptance, beamed into the depths of space, was not just a declaration of participation in a galactic conflict, but a statement of humanity's willingness to step onto the intergalactic stage. The ensuing weeks were a whirlwind of activity. Training programs were established combining Earth's best military tactics with new alien technologies. Engineers and scientists worked tirelessly to integrate alien systems into Earth's defense network. Young men and women from diverse backgrounds were recruited to become the first human representatives in a galactic conflict, undergoing intensive training in space combat, alien diplomacy, and interstellar navigation. In a display of unity and purpose, a grand ceremony was broadcast worldwide marking the departure of the first human fleet into the stars. The fleet, a mixture of Earth's finest ships upgraded with alien technology, stood ready to traverse the wormholes that connected the galaxy's vast distances. As the ships powered up their engines, a sense of anticipation and resolve filled the air. Humanity was no longer confined to the cradle of Earth. They were stepping out into the cosmos, not just as survivors or explorers, but as defenders of a wider community, they were just beginning to understand. The challenges ahead were daunting, but the spirit of humanity, emboldened by the call to arms, was ready to face the unknown. As the human fleet made its maiden voyage through the stars, a mix of anxiety and awe filled the hearts of those on board. The crew members, drawn from various cultures and backgrounds on Earth, were now ambassadors of humanity about to engage in their first official interaction with beings from beyond their solar system. The fleet's destination was a neutral space station, known as the Nexus Conclave, a massive structure orbiting a serene blue giant star. The Conclave served as a meeting ground for various civilizations of the intergalactic community, and was now the site for humanity's formal introduction to this vast coalition. Upon arrival, the human fleet was greeted by a delegation of alien ambassadors, representing the myriad species of the Coalition. These beings varied in form, from the towering crystalline structures of the Silixians to the ethereal, glowing forms of the Aurorians. Each species brought with it a unique set of customs, languages, and perspectives, creating a mosaic of interstellar life. The humans, led by Ambassador Amira Al-Farsi, stepped forward to meet their counterparts. The air was filled with a cacophony of sounds, as various alien languages filled the communication channels, translated into Earth's myriad tongues through advanced translation devices provided by the Coalition. The first meeting was a blend of formal ceremony and cautious curiosity. Each alien ambassador presented a gift to their human counterparts, a tradition in galactic diplomacy. These gifts ranged from intricate artifacts representing each species' culture to data crystals containing vast libraries of knowledge. Amira on behalf of humanity, 
offered a collection of Earth's finest achievements. Art, music, literature, and scientific works, encapsulating the diversity and creativity of human culture. The exchange was symbolic, representing a willingness to share and learn from one another. Following the ceremonies, the humans were invited to participate in a series of dialogues and briefings, aimed at integrating them into the Coalition's structures and strategies. The humans learned about the Coalition's history, its victories and defeats, and the common threat that now loomed over the galaxy. In these discussions, the humans discovered the strengths and weaknesses of their new allies. The Selixians, for example, were master builders and engineers, capable of constructing fortresses and ships that could withstand incredible punishment. The Aurorians, meanwhile, possessed unparalleled knowledge of the galaxy's energetic phenomena, providing invaluable insights into cosmic forces. As the humans shared their own knowledge and perspectives, they began to carve out a role for themselves within the Coalition. Their adaptability, resourcefulness, and unique approaches to problem-solving were recognized as valuable assets. The Coalition, accustomed to certain ways of thinking and acting, found the fresh perspectives offered by humanity to be enlightening and, at times, revolutionary. Training and joint exercises were soon underway, with human and alien forces working side by side to prepare for the upcoming challenges. These interactions were not without their difficulties, as differences in culture, biology, and technology led to misunderstandings and mishaps. However, each challenge was met with a shared commitment to cooperation and mutual respect. As the days turned into weeks, the human fleet, once a symbol of Earth's solitary struggle for survival, became an integral part of the intergalactic coalition's forces. Bonds of camaraderie and friendship began to form, transcending the vast differences between species. With humanity now integrated into the interstellar coalition, strategic planning for the impending conflict intensified. The Nexus Conclave became a hub of military and diplomatic activity, with representatives from every member species contributing their expertise to a unified defense strategy. The humans, with their fresh perspective and rapid adaptability, quickly became integral to these efforts. General Marcus Hawk, representing Earth's military expertise, joined the Coalition's Strategic Council. Here, he encountered a myriad of tactical philosophies and technologies, from the Selixians' impregnable defenses to the Aurorians' mastery of energy manipulation. Yet amidst this diversity, a common goal united them to thwart the encroaching threat that loomed over the galaxy. The enemy, known as the Krilaxi, were a formidable force, known for their relentless aggression and mysterious origins. Little was known about their motivations, but their path of destruction through the galaxy was clear. The Coalition's task was to devise a plan that could leverage their combined strengths against the Krylaxi's overwhelming might. Humanity's contribution to the strategy was multifaceted. Earth scientists and engineers, led by Dr. Lena Nguyen, worked alongside alien experts to enhance the Coalition's technology. They introduced human innovations in material science, propulsion and computing, blending them with alien technologies to create new hybrid systems. These advancements were rapidly integrated into the Coalition's fleets, enhancing their capabilities. Meanwhile, in the realm of tactics, General Hawk proposed a series of maneuvers that leveraged humanity's ingenuity and adaptability. He suggested using decoy fleets and guerrilla tactics, drawing on human history's rich tapestry of asymmetric warfare. These ideas were initially met with skepticism, as many Coalition members were accustomed to more straightforward, conventional strategies. However, simulation exercises demonstrated their effectiveness, and the Coalition began to see the value in incorporating such tactics into their overall strategy. On the diplomatic front, Ambassador Amira Al-Farsi engaged in delicate negotiations to secure more allies and resources for the Coalition. She worked tirelessly to bridge cultural and ideological differences, fostering unity and shared purpose among the galaxy's myriad civilizations. Her efforts not only strengthened the Coalition's numbers, but also its morale, as a sense of camaraderie and mutual respect took root among its members. Training exercises commenced, with human and alien forces collaborating closely. These exercises were not without challenges, 
as differing physiologies, technologies, and tactical doctrines required considerable adjustment and coordination. However, these shared trials only served to strengthen the bonds between the coalition's members, forging a cohesive and versatile fighting force. As the strategy took shape, a sense of cautious optimism spread throughout the Nexus Conclave. The coalition's diverse array of species, each with its own strengths and weaknesses, had come together to form a singular, formidable entity. Humanity, once isolated on the fringe of the galaxy, now stood at the heart of this grand alliance, ready to face the unknown with newfound allies by their side. The galaxy braced as the first major engagement with the Krillaxi loomed on the horizon. The coalition forces, a mosaic of the galaxy's civilizations unified under a single banner, positioned themselves near the Vortex Nebula, a strategic location predicted to be the Krylaxi's next target. The nebula's swirling gases and erratic electromagnetic fields provided a challenging backdrop for the impending battle, testing the Coalition's coordination and adaptability. General Marcus Hawk, aboard the flagship Harmony, coordinated the Coalition's diverse units, each ready to play its role in the intricate dance of interstellar combat. The humans' innovative tactics and technologies were about to be tested in the crucible of battle, their efficacy a crucial factor in the Coalition's strategy. As the Krylaxi fleet emerged from the nebula's mists, its formidable array of ships became visible, their designs alien and ominous. The Coalition forces held their positions, their diverse crews united by a common resolve. The tension was palpable as the two fleets assessed each other, the brief calm before the storm of battle. The engagement began with a volley of energy blasts from the Krylaxi, their weapons emitting a spectral glow that cut through the nebula's haze. The Coalition responded in kind, unleashing a barrage of counterfire. The humans' contributions were immediately apparent. Their ships, equipped with advanced hybrid technologies, executed unconventional maneuvers, confounding the Krylaxi targeting systems. Amidst the chaos of battle, a small contingent of human and Silixian ships executed a daring flank maneuver, a tactic proposed by General Hawk and refined with input from his alien counterparts. The maneuver caught the Krylaxi off guard, disrupting their formation and exposing their vulnerabilities. The Coalition forces seized the opportunity, pressing their attack with renewed vigor. On the ground, Coalition troops, including human soldiers, engaged Krylaxi ground forces on nearby planets and moons within the nebula. The terrestrial battles were fierce, with the Coalition forces contending not only with the Krylaxi, but also with the treacherous environments of the celestial bodies. Humanity's adaptability and resilience shone through as they quickly adapted to alien terrains and atmospheres, fighting side by side with their extraterrestrial comrades. As the battle raged, Dr. Lena Nguyen and her team of scientists and engineers worked tirelessly aboard the Harmony, analyzing real-time data from the conflict. Their insights allowed the Coalition to adapt its tactics on the fly, countering the Krylaxi's strategies and turning the tide of battle. After hours of intense combat, the Krylaxi fleet began to falter. The Coalition's coordinated assault, bolstered by human ingenuity and the collective might of its members, had overwhelmed the invaders. The Krylaxi, recognizing their defeat, initiated a retreat, disappearing into the depths of space. The Coalition's victory was met with a mixture of relief and celebration. The forces had not only repelled the Krylaxi, but had also proven their ability to work together as a cohesive unit. The battle had forged stronger bonds between the member species, with humanity earning particular respect for their contributions. As the Coalition ships regrouped and tended to their wounded, the significance of the victory became clear. This was not just a triumph over a common enemy. It was a testament to the power of unity and cooperation in the face of adversity. For humanity, it marked their ascent as a vital and respected member of the galactic community their valor and innovation shining brightly in the vast expanse of space. In the aftermath of the battle near the Vortex Nebula, the Coalition's spirits were high, yet a sense of unease lingered. The Krylaxi's strategic retreat suggested they were regrouping for a more formidable assault. It was during this critical period that an unexpected development shifted the dynamics of the galactic struggle. A distress signal was intercepted by the Coalition's communication network. 
It originated from a remote sector, known for its volatile star systems, and largely avoided by interstellar travelers. The source was astonishing. It was from the Krelaxi themselves. The Coalition's Council convened to debate the implications of this unprecedented call for help. Some members argued it could be a trap, a deceitful ploy by the Krelaxi to undermine the Coalition's unity. Others saw it as a genuine plea, an opportunity to understand their adversary and possibly turn the tide of the war. Humanity, represented by Ambassador Amira Al-Farsi, advocated for a cautious approach to engage with the Krelaxi, emphasizing the potential to gain insight into their motives and possibly foster a new ally in the conflict. With the Council's approval, a delegation was assembled to respond to the distress signal, led by Ambassador Al-Farsi and accompanied by a contingent of diplomats, scientists, including Dr. Lena Nguyen, and a security detail. The delegation's ship, the Concord, set a course for the signal's origin, delving into the uncharted reaches of the sector. Upon arrival, the delegation encountered a scene of devastation. A Krilaxi colony was in ruins, its infrastructure ravaged by a natural disaster, a cataclysmic event caused by the sector's unstable stars. The Krylaxi, known to the Coalition only as fierce warriors, were now seen in a different light, vulnerable, desperate, and in need of aid. Ambassador Al-Farsi initiated first contact with the Krylaxi leaders, employing the Coalition's advanced translation technologies to facilitate communication. The Krylaxi, although wary, shared their plight with the delegation. They revealed that their aggressive expansion across the galaxy was driven not by a desire for conquest, but by a search for new homes, as their native worlds were being destroyed by the very forces they sought to escape. The revelation prompted a shift in the Coalition's perspective on the Krylaxi. Sympathy emerged among the member species, along with a realization that the conflict was rooted in a shared struggle for survival. The delegation offered humanitarian aid to the Krilaxi, providing relief supplies and technical assistance to stabilize the affected colony. In the weeks that followed, a series of diplomatic engagements unfolded between the Coalition and the Krilaxi. The humans played a central role, leveraging their diplomatic acumen and newfound understanding of the Krilaxi to bridge the gap between the former adversaries. A landmark agreement was reached, with the Krilaxi joining the Coalition as a member species. Their knowledge of the galaxy's unstable regions and their formidable military capabilities, now allied with the Coalition, bolstered the collective's strength and strategic positioning. The alliance with the Krilaxi marked a turning point in the galactic conflict. No longer was the battle a simple clash of us versus them. It had evolved into a nuanced struggle, with former enemies uniting under a common cause. Humanity, once the newcomers to the galactic stage, had played a pivotal role in transforming the nature of the conflict, fostering unity in a galaxy fraught with division. As the Coalition's fleets, now augmented with Krilaxi ships, prepared for the next phase of the conflict, a sense of cautious optimism spread among the ranks. The war was far from over, but the path to peace had become clearer, illuminated by the unlikely alliance that had emerged from the ashes of confrontation. With the Krilaxi now allies, the Coalition's strategy against the looming threats evolved dramatically. The new alliance brought forth invaluable intelligence about the darker regions of the galaxy, areas where chaos reigned and unspeakable horrors dwelled. It was in one such region, a swath of space known as the Obsidian Void, that the Coalition believed they would find the key to understanding the forces rallying against them. The Obsidian Void was a vast expanse of darkness, where stars were few, and the fabric of space-time warped in inexplicable ways. Legend had it that ancient horrors from the universe's infancy lurked in this abyss, hidden from the eyes of the galaxy's younger species. The Coalition planned an expedition into this heart of darkness, seeking to uncover secrets that could tilt the balance of the ongoing conflict in their favor. Humanity, with its insatiable curiosity and indomitable spirit, played a central role in this mission. The USS Endeavor, a vessel retrofitted with advanced technologies from across the Coalition, was chosen to lead the expedition. Commanded by Captain Elena Vasquez, a seasoned explorer with a reputation for courage in the face of the unknown, the Endeavor carried a crew of humans and aliens, 
scientists and soldiers, all united by a common mission. As the Endeavor ventured into the void, the crew encountered phenomena that defied their understanding of physics and reality. Stars that sang haunting melodies, nebulae that weaved complex narratives in their gaseous folds, and voids that whispered secrets of the cosmos. Dr. Lena Nguyen and her team worked tirelessly to catalog these phenomena, seeking patterns and clues in the chaos. Deep within the void, the expedition stumbled upon an ancient relic, a structure of unknown origin, floating in the abyss. It was a massive construct, shaped like a dodecahedron, its surfaces etched with glyphs that resonated with an eerie energy. The Coalition's top linguists and cryptographers, including a Kralaxi historian who specialized in ancient civilizations, were called upon to decipher the glyphs. The relic revealed a harrowing truth. It was a beacon, a warning left by a long-vanished civilization about the cyclical rise of a malevolent force that sought to unravel the fabric of the universe. This force, known only as the Nihilum, was awakening once more, drawing upon the energies of the void to gain strength. The revelation sent shockwaves through the coalition. The Krilaxi, who had long been blamed for the galaxy's woes, were but mere refugees fleeing this greater threat. The true enemy was not one of flesh and blood, but an existential horror that sought to extinguish the light of all stars. Armed with this knowledge, the Coalition formulated a new strategy. They would not only defend against the encroaching darkness, but also seek to seal the breach in the void through which the Nihilum drew its power. This monumental task required the combined efforts of the galaxy's greatest minds and the mobilization of the entire Coalition fleet. Humanity, once on the fringes of the galactic community, now stood at the forefront of this existential battle. Their journey into the heart of darkness had unveiled the true nature of the threat, and their resolve would be crucial in the trials to come. As the Coalition's fleets rallied and the scientists devised their plans, the galaxy braced for a conflict unlike any it had faced before. A battle not for territory or dominion, but for the very essence of existence itself. With the stark revelation of the Nihilum's existence, the Coalition's mission pivoted from a mere defense against aggressive forces to a profound quest to preserve the fabric of the cosmos. The ancient relic's warning underscored a connection between the Nihilum and the cyclical cataclysms that had periodically ravaged the galaxy. The Coalition, now united in purpose like never before, embarked on a journey to uncover the historical cycles of destruction and rebirth, hoping to find a clue to thwart the Nihilum's resurgence. Archives and libraries across the galaxy, from the ancient memory worlds of the Aurorians to the data vaults of the Selixians, were scoured for information. Humanity contributed its own share, delving into Earth's myths and legends, which spoke of ancient cataclysms and rebirths in metaphorical terms. The Coalition formed a multidisciplinary team, including historians, archaeologists, and quantum physicists, to decode the past secrets and apply those learnings to their current predicament. Amidst this backdrop, a human archaeologist, Dr. Samuel Adiemi, discovered a series of ancient human artifacts that, upon closer examination, revealed astronomical data predating any known civilization on Earth. These artifacts, when combined with alien records, unveiled a galactic map of previous Nihilum incursions and their subsequent impacts on the cosmos's evolution. This breakthrough led to an expedition to a long-abandoned planet, believed to have been a nexus of ancient civilizations during the last Nihilum incursion. The planet, now a desolate world, held the ruins of a civilization that had fought the Nihilum. Within these ruins lay the key to understanding the ancient enemy, and potentially the means to defeat it. The Coalition's best minds, including Dr. Lena Nguyen and Dr. Adiemi, spearheaded the exploration of the planet's surface, uncovering technology and records that defied contemporary understanding. They discovered that the ancient civilization had developed a method to temporarily weaken the Nihilum, using a network of quantum resonators that disrupted the dark entity's connection to the cosmic fabric. Inspired by this discovery, the Coalition devised a plan to construct a modern iteration of the resonator network, using the combined technological prowess and resources of its member species. The endeavor was colossal, 
requiring the mobilization of entire worlds and the redirection of the Coalition's collective energy resources. As the construction of the Resonator network progressed, the Neolum's influence began to manifest more palpably, with stars dimming and entire systems falling into chaos. The urgency of their mission grew, with the Coalition racing against time to activate the network before the Neolum could fully awaken and unleash its catastrophic power. Throughout this chapter of their saga, humanity's role was pivotal. Their determination, creativity, and propensity for unifying diverse groups shone brightly, propelling the Coalition forward. The echoes of the past, captured in the ancient ruins and artifacts, now resonated with the Coalition's resolve to shape a different future, one where the cycle of destruction and rebirth would be broken, and the galaxy's myriad civilizations could thrive in a universe freed from the shadow of annihilation. As the Coalition worked tirelessly to activate the Resonator Network, a dire turn of events refocused their attention on Earth. The Nihilum, sensing the threat posed by the Coalition's plans, launched a preemptive strike. Its dark influence coalesced into a massive armada, unlike any seen before. Its target, the Sol System, humanity's home. The sudden shift to a defensive stance tested the Coalition's resolve and unity. The Siege of Sol wasn't just a battle for territory. It was a symbolic fight for the heart and spirit of the Coalition. Earth, once an isolated planet on the galactic fringe, had become the linchpin in the Coalition's fight against the Neolum. The human response was swift and determined. General Marcus Hawk mobilized Earth's defenses, integrating them with Coalition forces to create a formidable barrier against the incoming threat. The skies of Earth and its neighboring planets bristled with ships and weaponry, a testament to the Coalition's technological prowess and solidarity. As the Nihilum's forces descended upon the Sol system, a series of intense battles ensued. From the asteroid belt to the moon's surface, humanity and its allies fought with unyielding determination. The Earth's atmosphere crackled with energy as the battle raged, a spectacle of light and shadow that was visible even from the planet's surface. Amidst the chaos, Captain Elena Vasquez of the USS Endeavor orchestrated a daring counteroffensive. Leveraging the unique human-made hybrid technologies, her fleet executed maneuvers that disrupted the Neolum's formations, creating openings for coalition forces to exploit. The Endeavor, symbolizing humanity's resilience and ingenuity, became a beacon of hope in the darkened skies. On the ground, the conflict was equally fierce. Cities and landscapes became battlegrounds, with human and alien defenders standing side by side against the Neolum's relentless onslaught. The courage and solidarity displayed by the defenders inspired tales of heroism that would resonate throughout the galaxy, regardless of the conflict's outcome. In the midst of the siege, a pivotal moment occurred on Mars, where a portion of the Resonator network was under construction. Dr. Lena Nguyen, and a team of Coalition scientists and engineers defended the site against a direct Neolum assault, understanding that the network's completion was crucial to the galaxy's survival. Their successful defense, under seemingly insurmountable odds, marked a turning point in the battle for Saul. As the tide began to turn, the Coalition's forces, galvanized by their successes on Earth and Mars, pushed back against the Nihilum's armada. The invaders, unaccustomed to such resistance, began to falter. The Siege of Saul, while a harrowing trial showcased the unbreakable will and unity of the Coalition, with humanity playing a central and indomitable role. The battle for Saul ended not just with the Coalition's victory, but with a renewed sense of purpose and camaraderie among its members. The defense of humanity's home had become a symbol of the Coalition's resilience, a testament to the strength found in unity and the enduring spirit of those who fought side by side, under the banner of a shared cause. The Siege of Saul was not just a victory for Earth, it was a victory for the galaxy, a beacon of light against the encroaching darkness of the Nihilum. The successful defense of the Sol system marked a turning point in the galaxy's fight against the Nihilum. The Siege of Sol, while a testament to the Coalition's military prowess, also highlighted a more profound strength, the unity and diversity of its members. In the aftermath of the battle, as the Coalition's fleets regrouped and Earth began to heal, the focus shifted back to completing the Resonator Network. 
a task now imbued with a renewed sense of urgency and solidarity. The Coalition's scientists, engineers, and strategists, representing a myriad of species and cultures, collaborated with unprecedented synergy. The Resonator Network's construction, a monumental undertaking spanning across multiple star systems, became a symbol of the Coalition's unity. Each member species contributed their unique skills and knowledge, from the Silixians' architectural mastery to the Aurorians' understanding of cosmic energies, all harmonized with human ingenuity and adaptability. As the network neared completion, the Coalition planned a series of synchronized activations, a coordinated effort that required precise timing and unshakable trust among the member species. The resonators, once activated, would emit a harmonic frequency designed to disrupt the Neolum's influence, severing its tendrils from the fabric of the galaxy. During this critical phase, Ambassador Amira Al-Farsi emerged as a beacon of diplomatic excellence. Her efforts to maintain and strengthen the bonds within the coalition were crucial. She navigated complex political landscapes, ensuring that the coalition remained focused on the common threat, preventing internal divisions from undermining their collective purpose. The activation of the Resonator Network was a moment of unprecedented interstellar cooperation. Across the galaxy, crews of mixed species worked side by side, their actions synchronized through a network of communication that transcended language and culture. The success of this operation would not only represent a technological triumph, but also a testament to the power of unity and diversity. As the Resonators came online, a wave of harmonic energy rippled through the galaxy, creating a symphony of light and sound that touched every star and planet. The Neolum, caught in the network's embrace, writhed and weakened, its dark influence receding like a tide. The galaxy watched in awe as the shadow that had loomed over them began to dissolve, the threat of annihilation fading away. In the aftermath, the Coalition's victory was celebrated not just as a military achievement, but as a milestone in galactic unity. The diverse cultures of the galaxy, once isolated or in conflict, now shared a bond forged in the crucible of survival. Humanity, whose journey from the fringes of the galaxy to the heart of an interstellar alliance had been fraught with challenges, stood as a testament to the potential of unity and diversity. The victory against the Nihilum was a beginning, not an end. It opened new pathways for cooperation and dialogue among the galaxy's myriad civilizations. The Resonator Network, a symbol of their collective strength, also served as a beacon of hope for a future where the galaxy's diversity was seen as its greatest asset, a source of strength and beauty in the vast tapestry of the cosmos. With the Nihilum's influence waning, the galaxy breathed a collective sigh of relief. However, the Coalition knew that the battle was not over. The Nihilum, though weakened, still posed a significant threat. The Resonator Network had disrupted its power, but the entity itself lingered, hidden in the darkest corners of the galaxy. The Coalition, now more united than ever, embarked on a mission to eradicate the Neelum's remnants and prevent its resurgence. This mission marked a new phase in the galaxy's defense strategy, transitioning from a defensive stance to an assertive campaign to secure the future. The Coalition's military forces, bolstered by the technological advancements and the camaraderie forged in battle, launched a series of coordinated strikes against the Nihilum's strongholds. Humanity played a crucial role in these efforts. The innovative tactics and strategies that had proven effective in the Siege of Saul were now deployed on a galactic scale. General Marcus Hawk led the charge, orchestrating complex operations that leveraged the unique strengths of each coalition member. The humans' ability to adapt and innovate combined with the collective might of the Coalition, created a formidable force that pushed the Nihilum back, system by system. Meanwhile, Dr. Lena Nguyen and her team of scientists focused on unraveling the mysteries of the Nihilum's essence. Their research, conducted in the aftermath of the Resonator Network's activation, aimed to understand the entity's nature and weaknesses fully. This knowledge was vital for developing a long-term solution to prevent the Nihilum's return, a task that required not only scientific expertise but also a deep understanding of the galaxy's cosmic fabric. As the Coalition's forces advanced, they encountered pockets of resistance where the Nihilum's influence persisted. These battles were fierce, 
testing the coalition's resolve and the strength of their newfound unity. However, each victory served to reinforce their commitment to the cause, demonstrating the enduring power of their alliance. During one pivotal operation, the coalition discovered a conduit through which the Nihilum was attempting to draw power from the void itself. The mission to sever this connection became the turning point in the campaign. Led by a joint task force, including elite units from various coalition species and humanity's finest, the operation targeted the conduit's nexus, a volatile region where the fabric of reality was thin and the Nihilum's presence was concentrated. The operation was fraught with danger, but the coalition's forces, armed with the knowledge and technology gleaned from their previous victories, managed to infiltrate the Nexus and execute their plan. The conduit was destroyed, cutting off the Neelum's lifeline and leaving it vulnerable. In the campaign's aftermath, the galaxy celebrated not just the triumph over the Neelum, but the enduring spirit of cooperation that had made it possible. The Coalition had transformed from a temporary alliance formed in response to a common threat into a unified front, a testament to the idea that diversity, when embraced and harnessed, can be an unparalleled source of strength. Humanity, once a solitary species on the cosmic stage, had become integral to the galaxy's collective identity. Their journey from isolation to interstellar camaraderie mirrored the broader evolution of the Coalition, symbolizing the potential for unity in a universe teeming with diversity. The turning point in the battle against the Nihilum had become a turning point for the galaxy itself, marking the dawn of a new era of cooperation and mutual understanding. In the aftermath of the Nihilum's defeat, the galaxy found itself at a crossroads. While the immediate threat had been vanquished, the scars of the conflict were deep, and the path to healing was fraught with challenges. The Coalition, now a symbol of unity and strength, faced the task of rebuilding worlds, mending interstellar relations, and addressing the underlying issues that the Neolum's rise had exposed. The reconstruction phase unveiled the true cost of the conflict. Planets lay in ruin, ecosystems were disrupted, and countless civilizations bore the weight of loss and displacement. The Coalition, committed to a vision of a united galaxy, mobilized its resources for relief efforts, with humanity playing a pivotal role in the initiative. Humanitarian missions, led by a diverse array of species, including humans, delivered aid to affected worlds, providing medical assistance, restoring infrastructure, and supporting ecological recovery. The shared experiences of loss and recovery fostered a deeper sense of empathy and solidarity among the galaxy's inhabitants, strengthening the bonds that the Coalition had forged in battle. Amidst the physical rebuilding, the Coalition also embarked on a journey of introspection and reform. The Nihilum's emergence had revealed vulnerabilities in the galaxy's political and social structures, prompting a re-evaluation of governance, security, and cooperation mechanisms. Humanity's experience in overcoming its own historical divisions offered valuable insights into fostering a more inclusive and resilient interstellar society. The economic impact of the conflict necessitated innovation and collaboration. The Coalition established interstellar trade and resource-sharing agreements, bolstering recovering economies and creating a network of mutual support. Human ingenuity and adaptability were instrumental in these efforts, as they shared technologies, cultural practices, and strategies for sustainable development. As the galaxy healed, memorials were erected on countless worlds to honor those who had fallen. These monuments served as poignant reminders of the past and beacons of hope for the future. Humanity contributed its own commemorations, blending Earth's artistic traditions with those of their alien allies, symbolizing the shared heritage of struggle and triumph. The legacy of the conflict and the lessons learned resonated through the Coalition's future endeavors. The victory over the Neolum had not only preserved the galaxy's existence, but it also catalyzed a transformation in interstellar relations with a renewed commitment to peace, understanding, and unity. Humanity, once on the periphery of the galactic community, had emerged as a key architect of this new era. The price of peace had been steep, but the fruits of that peace, a galaxy more interconnected and resilient than ever before, promised a brighter future for all its inhabitants. The Coalition, fortified by its trials and triumphs, 
stood ready to navigate the uncharted territories of the post-Nihilum galaxy, with Earth and its people at the heart of this new voyage. The galaxy, now in a period of unprecedented peace and cooperation, turned its gaze outward, toward the unexplored frontiers of the cosmos. The defeat of the Nihilum had not only safeguarded the galaxy's present, but it also unlocked new possibilities for the future. The Coalition, with humanity as one of its central members, embarked on a bold initiative to venture beyond the known galaxy, to discover, learn, and connect with whatever lay in the vast unknown. This new era was marked by the launch of the Horizon Initiative, a series of missions aimed at exploring the deep cosmos, charting unknown regions, and seeking out potential new members of the galactic community. The initiative represented the collective curiosity and ambition of the Coalition, harnessing the diverse talents and technologies of its member species. Humanity's role in this grand endeavor was significant. The spirit of exploration, which had driven humans to traverse their own planet and reach out to the stars, was now a beacon guiding the Horizon Initiative. Human explorers, scientists, diplomats, and artists were integral to the missions, bringing their unique perspectives and ingenuity to the forefront of interstellar exploration. The first of the Horizon missions was the Voyager, a state-of-the-art vessel designed for long-range exploration, equipped with advanced propulsion systems, life support, and communication technologies, a melting pot of the Coalition's best science and engineering. The Voyager's crew was as diverse as its technology, with individuals from various species, including humans, working together in their journey into the unknown. As the Voyager and subsequent Horizon missions ventured into the deep cosmos, they encountered wonders and challenges beyond imagination. Nebulae that shimmered with the colors of a thousand sunsets, planets with life unlike anything known to the Coalition, and phenomena that defied existing scientific understanding. Each discovery was a puzzle piece in the vast mosaic of the universe, shared with the entire Coalition, enriching the collective knowledge and inspiring further exploration. The missions also encountered new civilizations, some just beginning their journey to the stars, others ancient and wise, yet unknown to the Coalition. Humanity, with its relatively recent entry into the interstellar community, played a crucial role in these encounters, advocating for diplomacy, understanding, and the exchange of knowledge. The Horizon Initiative thus became not only a journey through space, but also a journey through the diverse tapestry of life in the cosmos. Back in the Coalition's territories, the impact of the Horizon Initiative was profound. The discoveries and encounters reinvigorated cultures, spurred technological innovation, and prompted philosophical debates about the nature of the universe and the place of sentient life within it. Humanity, alongside its Coalition partners, stood at the forefront of this new chapter in galactic history, their combined efforts shining a light into the shadows of the cosmos, seeking answers to age-old questions and forging new paths of unity and discovery. The galaxy had emerged from the shadow of the Nihilum, not with fear and trepidation, but with a renewed sense of purpose and wonder. The Horizon Initiative symbolized this new era, a testament to the resilience, curiosity, and spirit of cooperation that defined the post-Nihilum galaxy. Humanity, once looking up at the stars in isolation, now explored them hand in hand with their fellow civilizations, embarking together on a journey toward a new horizon. As the Horizon Initiative expanded, the Coalition's understanding of the universe deepened. The voyages undertaken by vessels like the Voyager heralded a new era of discovery and connection, where the mysteries of the cosmos gradually unveiled themselves to the curious and united inhabitants of the galaxy. Humanity, with its innate drive to explore and understand, played a pivotal role in these missions. The insights gained from Earth's own history of exploration and conflict provided valuable lessons for the challenges encountered in the vastness of space. The experiences of human explorers, who once charted unknown oceans and continents, now resonated with those navigating the starry seas, fostering a spirit of perseverance and ingenuity. The Coalition's explorers encountered civilizations at various stages of development, from nascent societies gazing up at their night skies in wonder to advanced empires with knowledge stretching back millennia. Each encounter was an opportunity for cultural exchange and growth, 
with humanity often serving as mediators and emissaries, drawing upon their own history of overcoming division and strife. These interactions led to a rich tapestry of interstellar relations, with trade, knowledge exchange, and collaborative projects flourishing across the explored regions of the universe. The Coalition's libraries and databases swelled with new knowledge, from advanced scientific theories to exquisite forms of art, all contributing to a burgeoning renaissance that swept across its member worlds. Amidst this age of discovery, humanity's own culture and technology evolved at an unprecedented pace. Contact with alien philosophies and technologies sparked a surge of innovation on Earth and its colonies, leading to advancements in energy, medicine, and AI that once would have seemed like the realm of fiction. The arts and humanities flourished too, with human creativity inspired by the myriad perspectives and aesthetics of their interstellar neighbors. However, the journey beyond the stars was not without its challenges. Ethical dilemmas arose as the Coalition grappled with the implications of their interactions with less advanced civilizations. The shadows of humanity's own past, marked by colonization and exploitation, loomed large, prompting a cautious approach to such encounters. The Coalition established strict protocols to protect the autonomy and development of these societies, with humanity often advocating for the most respectful and non-intrusive policies. As the Horizon Initiative pressed onward, the very concept of community expanded. The Coalition, initially formed to combat a common threat, now stood as a beacon of cooperative exploration and mutual advancement. The divisions that once defined interstellar politics, species, world, and system, began to blur, replaced by a shared identity forged in the crucible of discovery and shared endeavor. In this new era, humanity found its place not as rulers or outliers, but as integral members of a diverse and dynamic interstellar community. Their journey from the blue orb of Earth to the vast expanse of the galaxy was a testament to the unyielding human spirit, now shared and celebrated among the stars. The future, once a source of uncertainty and fear, was now a canvas of endless possibilities, painted by the hands of a galaxy united in its quest for knowledge and connection beyond the stars. In the aftermath of the Horizon Initiative's profound successes, the galaxy took a moment to reflect on the journey that had brought them to this new era of exploration and unity. Across worlds and cultures, stories were shared. Tales of bravery, sacrifice, and the indomitable spirit that had seen them through the darkest times. These stories, resonating through the cosmos, served not only as a remembrance of the past but as guiding lights for the future. Amidst this collective reflection, humanity's role in the galaxy's recent history was celebrated and scrutinized. The tales of human valor, ingenuity and perseverance during the conflict with the Neolum and the subsequent efforts to heal and explore the galaxy were recounted on countless worlds in myriad forms. They were immortalized in artworks, songs, and holoplays, capturing the essence of the human spirit that had so significantly influenced the interstellar narrative. One poignant tale was that of Captain Elena Vasquez and the crew of the USS Endeavor, whose daring missions had been crucial in both the conflict and the Horizon Initiative. Their story was a beacon of bravery and exploration, inspiring a new generation of explorers across the Coalition. Another widely recounted saga was that of Dr. Lena Nguyen, whose groundbreaking research had pierced the veil of the Nihilum's mystery, changing the course of the conflict. Her dedication to science and the pursuit of knowledge became a symbol of the Coalition's commitment to understanding the universe and its myriad mysteries. The tale of Ambassador Amira Al-Farsi also resonated deeply within the galaxy's collective consciousness. Her diplomatic acumen and unwavering commitment to unity had helped forge the Coalition into a force of enduring solidarity and purpose. Her story underscored the power of diplomacy and understanding in shaping the galaxy's destiny. As these stories were shared and celebrated, they served as a reminder of the values that had united the galaxy's diverse inhabitants. Courage, curiosity, and the pursuit of common good. They also highlighted the lessons learned from the darker chapters of their history, underscoring the importance of vigilance, empathy, and cooperation in facing whatever challenges the future might hold. In this era of reflection and celebration, 
The galaxy also honored the memory of those who had fallen in the struggle against the Nihilum. Monuments and memorials were erected on many worlds, serving as enduring tributes to the sacrifices made for the sake of the galaxy's future. These sites became places of pilgrimage, where individuals from various species and cultures came together to pay their respects and to affirm their shared commitment to peace and solidarity. The echoes of valor, as this period of reflection came to be known, solidified the coalition's resolve to carry forward the lessons of the past. The valor and unity displayed during the galaxy's darkest times had illuminated a path toward a brighter future, a future where the echoes of valor would continue to inspire generations to come, guiding them as they navigated the vast, uncharted expanses of the cosmos. As the galaxy moved forward from the period known as the Echoes of Valor, the Coalition, enriched by the lessons of the past and the promises of the future, embarked on a new chapter. The infinite canvas of the cosmos, with its boundless possibilities, lay before them, inviting exploration, understanding and collaboration on an unprecedented scale. Humanity, now integral to the interstellar community, found itself at the heart of this new chapter. Earth and its colonies, once isolated outposts on the galactic frontier, had become crossroads of culture, knowledge, and innovation, where beings from across the stars gathered to share ideas, forge partnerships, and plan joint ventures into the unknown. The spirit of exploration, which had long defined human endeavor, was now a galactic calling. The Horizon Initiative, having opened doorways to uncharted sectors of space, continued to evolve, its missions growing more ambitious with each passing year. These missions, crewed by diverse teams from across the Coalition, ventured into the void, not as conquerors or claimants, but as seekers of knowledge and harbingers of friendship. In this era of exploration, the arts and sciences flourished like never before. Discoveries made in the far reaches of space inspired new forms of art, music, and literature, reflecting the diverse experiences and perspectives of the galaxy's many cultures. Human contributions to these fields, infused with the rich tapestry of Earth's own heritage, added vibrant threads to the ever-expanding cultural mosaic of the Coalition. Technological advancements, too, accelerated at a breathtaking pace, fueled by the sharing of knowledge and the synthesis of ideas from across the galaxy. Humanity's knack for innovation played a key role in this renaissance, with Earth's scientists and engineers collaborating with their alien counterparts to push the boundaries of what was possible, from faster-than-light travel to groundbreaking advances in medicine and ecology. As the galaxy grew more interconnected, so too did its inhabitants grow more united in their shared identity as citizens of the cosmos. The divisions that once separated species and worlds began to blur, replaced by a collective sense of belonging to a vast interstellar community. Humanity, with its diverse cultures and histories, was a microcosm of this larger unity, embodying the potential for harmony amidst diversity. Yet, even as the galaxy celebrated its achievements and looked to the future with optimism, the Coalition remained vigilant. The lessons of the past, particularly the struggle against the Neelum, served as a constant reminder of the fragility of peace and the need for cooperation in the face of the unknown. The echoes of valor continued to resonate, inspiring a commitment to safeguard the hard-won harmony and to face any new challenges with the same courage and unity that had seen them through the darkest times. In this new era, marked by exploration, innovation, and unity, the galaxy stood as a beacon of what could be achieved when diverse beings came together for a common cause. Humanity once a solitary species gazing up at the stars in wonder, now played a central role in shaping the destiny of the cosmos. Their journey from the cradle of Earth to the infinite canvas of the galaxy, a testament to the power of curiosity, courage, and collaboration. The future was unwritten, a vast expanse of possibilities waiting to be explored, and the coalition, with humanity at its heart, was ready to paint its story upon the stars.